Hello and welcome to another episode of Underworld Diary. If you have been enjoying the stories told on this channel, feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to help the channel grow. In today's episode, we are going to take a look into the most recent mafia higher up to find himself a victim of a violent shooting, Frank Cali. Cali, killed in 2019, was said to be an extremely quick-rising mafia member with the potential to take over the top spot in the family. A well-respected man, Cali was reported to have important international ties that allowed the family to see significant growth in membership and wealth during his rise to the top. Specifically said to be the link between the Sicilian Mafia and the American Mafia, he was seen as an integral part in setting up an international drug trafficking ring. With his future within the crime family looking promising, a shocking event would see the mafioso being shot and killed in front of his family's home. A murder that caused rapid speculation about power moves within the Mafia, a rival faction challenging for control of New York, or a boss being scared of Cali's influence, turned out to be allegedly committed by a crazed civilian. Frank Cali was born on March 26, 1965, in New York City. He was raised by two Italian immigrant parents who grew up in the Palermo region of Sicily. Cali's father maintained strong connections to Palermo throughout his life, owning a small store in the region. His father also owned a store in the Bensonhurst region of Brooklyn, which Cali was said to help with. While his father was not officially connected to organized crime, he was mentioned in the infamous Pizza Connection case and was alleged to have ties to major members in both the American and Sicilian Mafia. These ties are what most point to as Cali's eventual connection to organized crime, as he began associating with Mafia members at a relatively early age. Hanging around the 18th Avenue crew in Brooklyn, young Cali began associating with longtime Gambino family member Jackie D'Amico, who reportedly held a high-ranking position within the family. Forming close relationships with powerful members of the Gambino family, he quickly moved up the ranks and was stated by the FBI to have become a member of the family before 1997. Associating with this family, Cali was alleged to have participated in traditional mafia rackets, including gambling and loan sharking. However, he also ran multiple companies, including import and export businesses based out of the Fort Hamilton section of Brooklyn. These profitable ventures proved useful to Cali's future, as he would soon begin dealing with the Sicilian Mafia. Cali's ability to rapidly rise within the world of organized crime was greatly improved by his connection to the Sicilian Mafia, specifically the Inzerillo clan. In addition to having connections to members of the clan, Cali also married the sister of a high-ranking member of the clan. With this strong familial tie, Cali was able to act as a key intermediary between the US and Italy. The connection truly strengthened in the 1980s, as the Inzerillo clan found itself in a war with the Corlanisi clan. This war lasted roughly four years and was referred to as the Matanza, an Italian word meaning slaughter. The conflict was extremely violent, with members of both sides being killed, and the violence spread beyond the clans to include political figures, judges, and police officers. It was estimated that over 400 people were killed as a result of this war. The end result of this brutal conflict saw the Corlanisi clan claiming victory, forcing the Inzerillo family out of Sicily. However, after the tensions of the war cooled down, Cali and members of the American Mafia allegedly played a role in helping the Inzerillo clan return to Palermo. Cali's influence in Italy reached the desks of Italian law enforcement, as they claimed that Cali was also a member of the Sicilian Cosa Nostra. Law enforcement further alleged that Cali acted as the main point of contact for Sicilian Mafia members coming to the United States, relying on and exchanging information regarding operations in both countries. His influence was illustrated in a conversation between two high-ranking Sicilian mafiosos who, when referring to Cali, said quote, he's our friend and he is everything over there. Unfortunately for Cali, making a name for himself in two major crime syndicates would inevitably bring the attention of law enforcement. Able to stay away from significant prison time for most of the 80s and 90s, Cali found himself in significant legal trouble for the first time in 2008. Here, Cali, allegedly now a capo within the family, was arrested alongside other high-ranking captains within the family stemming from the extortion of Joseph Valero. The extortion of Valero dated back to 2003 when he began working on the development of a NASCAR speedway in Staten Island. This multi-million dollar development drew attention from outside companies looking to get a piece of the construction, including allegedly the Gambino family. With Valero loosely associated with the Gambino family, members of the family looked to extort payouts from him. 
Eventually giving in to the demands, Valero began paying tens of thousands to the higher-ups in the family, with payments allegedly made to D'Amico and to the men law enforcement claimed was the boss of the family at the time, Nicholas Carrazzo. These payments went smoothly for a year before Valero was arrested on drug-related charges. To avoid prison, he began cooperating with the police, going undercover for around four years. The information gained from Valero, combined with evidence from the overall investigation, led to the arrest of over 61 associates of the family, including Callie, in 2008. Escalating from the initial extortion, dubbed Operation Old Bridge, the charges grew to include racketeering, extortion, and drug trafficking. Part of this case involved a drug trafficking alliance between the Sicilian Mafia and the Gambino family. The government alleged that Callie was the quote, ambassador for this smuggling operation. Of the 62 defendants facing charges, 60 pleaded guilty, receiving lesser charges. Callie was one of these defendants, ultimately pleading guilty to conspiracy charges related to the extortion of Valero, resulting in a 16-month prison sentence. His longtime associate Jackie D'Amico pleaded guilty to racketeering, receiving a two-year prison term, while the alleged head of the family, Nicholas Carrazzo, received a 13-and-a-half-year term for enterprise corruption and murder charges. Cali was later released in 2009, when his rise to the top of the family would begin to rapidly grow. Coming out of prison and entering the 2010s, the Gambino family looked to rebuild following the arrests of the previous decade. The leadership during this time was constantly changing, with many different members suspected of being the boss. This confusion in leadership was partly orchestrated by members of the family to avoid further prosecution. Callie was one of these members whose true title and power weren't truly known, some speculated he became the underboss, others said he was a member of the ruling panel of captains, and some alleged he became the acting boss of the family. Despite his true role not being concretely determined, Callie held significant power within the family at this time. He reportedly played a major role in bringing over Sicilian mafiosos and associates to New York to join the family, as well as expanding his involvement and development in the narcotic trafficking business. The New York Daily News reported that he specifically quote, bulked up its heroin and Oxycontin business. Growing in power and influence within the family, many believed it was only a matter of time before he officially became the boss. However, before he could reach that point, he would become the victim of one of the most surprising murders in Mafia history. On March 13, 2019, Callie was at his family home in the Toad Hill area when he was interrupted by a knock at the door from his alleged murderer, Anthony Camello. Camello informed Callie that he had backed into Callie's Cadillac Escalade parked on the street outside. Walking down to inspect the damage, the two engaged in a conversation captured on video, which quickly escalated into a confrontation. This confrontation resulted in Camello allegedly retrieving a gun from his truck and shooting Callie ten times, instantly killing him. The killing of this high-ranking mafia member immediately drew attention from local and national media, sparking speculation and theories about the motive behind the murder. Initial theories suggested a civil war within the Gambino family until Camello, the suspected killer, was arrested. However, Camello's arrest added more confusion to the case as he initially confessed to the shooting, claiming he killed Cali while attempting to place him under citizen's arrest. Further investigations into Camello revealed that he had mental health issues and an obsession with the QAnon conspiracy. His fixation on the deep state led him to attempt placing multiple individuals, including the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, under citizen's arrest. During his trial for Cali's murder, Camello appeared in court with quote, symbols and phrases associated with QAnon scrawled over his hand in pen, according to a report from the New York Times. Camello's defense initially argued, not guilty by reason of mental defect, but this defense was complicated when Camello refused to undergo a psychiatric examination. Despite his refusal, the judge ultimately ruled Camello was mentally unfit to stand trial, leading to his transfer to a psychiatric treatment center where he remains today. The violent murder of Frank Cali was extraordinarily shocking in the world of organized crime, marking the first high-ranking assassination of its kind since the 1980s and attracting significant media attention. However, as the true and bizarre motives behind this murder were uncovered, the case of Frank Cali's death adds another what-if to the violent history of the Mafia. Thank you for watching another episode of Underworld Diary. If you enjoy the stories told on the channel, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. If there are any topics you would like to see covered in future videos, feel free to leave a comment down below, if not, I will see you next time with another story from the underworld.